Do you want to build the ultimate base defense in Sons of the Forest without cheesing the game? Then this is the video for you. I tested base defenses for over 10 hours and I'm going to show you my entire journey as well as the most efficient result I got. Now for all the people that don't mind a little bit of cheesing, I'm going to mix in some optional stuff as well. I wanted to achieve a few goals with this setup. First of all, it needed to be very effective against any enemy type there is. Second of all, it needed to be very low maintenance overall. That means I only need to occasionally fix some things that are being broken. Third, my stuff should be very easy to fix and not hurting me. As you may know, if you build spikes the wrong way, they can hurt you a lot. So coming up with a way that is easy to maintain even during combat is crucial. First off, as soon as I hear base defenses as a Swiss guy, I instantly think of castles. In case you lived in a dungeon, castles are those great buildings they built on top of hills. And there's always these weird guys with beards going in and out of the castle. Now they usually made it very hard to even get up that hill to get to the castle. And that for obvious reasons, they just didn't like other people with weird beards. Just kidding, obviously they did it for strategic reasons. Now you could build your base in Sons of the Forest on top of the mountain if you wanted to. The enemy pathing is so bad, they usually don't even get up there. But living on the top of a mountain is not necessarily a good thing since you have to transport everything up there. And you don't really need base defenses and that is pretty boring. But hey look, there's also castles here in Switzerland that are not built on top of a hill. But how did they avoid getting people with weird beards into their castle? That is pretty simple, they got some shovels and built a moat and filled it with water. The problem is, shovels were much more prominent 800 years ago than they are now. Well, at least on this island. But even if you get this magical shovel, you cannot really shovel a moat with it. Good thing none of the enemies in this game has a beard, right? To be honest, I'm glad there are none. I don't want to know what Virginia would do to them. She's an absolute savage, right? But let's go back to that moat that I was talking about. So people back in the day filled the moats with water. So somehow I should simulate the moat with water inside. And the only thing we really have for that are the sticks. So the first thing I did was building a wall with sticks around my base. And by the way, this spot is absolutely amazing to build a base. It's one of the helicopter crash sites and you will never run out of food. Let me know in the comments if I should make a video on that, but let's continue with the moat. So while building the spike wall, make sure that you still have enough space behind the wall. After you got the spike wall, fortify them with rocks. I usually go with two rocks per stick, but you can go with three already if you want to. Now I just build a wall with logs behind the spikes. Then I started to build spikes on the other side of my current spike wall. And I let them face the opposite way towards my base. Make sure that you can still walk in between them without getting hurt. The reason for that is actually pretty simple. If you look at the enemy's behavior, they usually take a step back once they got hit with a weapon or with the spikes. So the idea is they hit the spikes and they're gonna retract a bit and run into the other spikes. The other good thing about this is maintenance. You can run on both sides easily without getting hurt with the repair hammer and repair the spikes. And yes, you heard that right, you can actually repair the spikes with your hammer. Now to finish off my moat, I built the exact log wall on the other side of the spikes. The results of this were great, but we are not quite there yet. So I built another spike wall in front of my artificial moat. That one should cause some initial damage to the enemies. It should also slow down enemies like the finger monster that can charge really fast. Now that initial wall was actually a great addition, but we are still not quite there yet. Enemies like the finger monster don't really seem to care much about my log wall. <laughs> so 
so I tested various heights to see which one is slowing him down the most. I ended up with four logs on top of each other. That way the monster actually has to jump over it and seems to have some problems with that. The reason why you should not go too high with it is the monster is still trying to jump over it. So if you build too high the monster will just try to get through the wall or will try to find another way in. If you don't mind resetting traps you could also additionally add some fly traps into the mix. Just place them here and there where you see a lot of enemies go through. I also recommend that you make two narrow openings on the inner and outer wall. Because if the pathfinding of the AI has no way to get into your base, they will just go through the walls. Make sure that the openings are not right next to each other, so the enemies have to go through the moat with the spikes. Because the longer they have to go through the spikes, the worse it gets for them. Now before I'm gonna show you how this defense is gonna hold up against masses of enemies, I'm gonna show you some cheesing strats that you can add optionally. First, let's talk about an upright log wall. Usually log walls don't let you place sticks very close to the wall. If you place one stick a little bit further from the wall, you can place the other stick pretty close to it. And then you just make a spike out of it that points towards the wall. If you go to the other side, you will see that the spike is actually sticking out of the wall. And once the enemies attack the wall, they will run into the spikes and you know what. The other thing you could do with the sticks is you could mount them on top of the moat wall. You are literally doing the exact same thing as you did with the log wall. You place one stick a little bit further away from the wall. And then you use the snap in feature to place a stick on top of the wall or on the side. You can even fortify these spikes on the wall. Now if enemies try to jump over this wall they won't have any fun with it. So if you want to use this strat, be aware that these strats might get patched. Now let's do the ultimate stress test for my base. I know this is highly unrealistic, but it's a great stress test for your base.
<laughs> As you can see, the damage is not too big, but Virginia also did her part. Let me know in the comments what your favorite way is to build a base defense. Also make sure to hit subscribe and the like button if you like this video and you want to have more tips about Sons of the Forest. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye. Oh, all these patrons. Thank you so much guys for your support. Mwah. Big schmouts. Mm -hmm.